الحمد لله أكرم الذي خلق الإنسان وكرم وعلمه من البيان ما لم يعلم فسبحان الذي لا يحسن تنانه باللسان ولا بالقلم ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله فسلف مصر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Something which is relevant again to our uh, Christmas holidays, uh, towards the festivity, getting into town was difficult, let alone with the Christmas shopping and parking, is uh, the whole idea of Isa al Islam, one of the most revered and respected uh, prophets within our scripture. Uh, such a figure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds him in such high esteem, not only him, but also his mother. A messenger that is named 25 times by name specifically in our scripture. And when revelation was coming down to the Prophet, you have to understand the context before we start discussing verses regarding, <coughs> regarding to Isa is that the Messenger of Allah was being continuously rejected. He became a social outcast in his society. Islamophobia is not something which is new. It's not a new phenomenon. The Qur'an is the historical recollection of Islamophobia. The Qur'an historically documents how Prophets were rejected time and time again. So when the Messenger of Allah was being ostracized from his society and his community, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealing mess, revelation to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, reminding him and informing him that you're not the first person to be rejected. Previous prophets were also rejected. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would admonish the community by reminding them that previous communities were also punished for rejecting their prophets. And the same thing can happen to you. So it was kind of double fold uh, in terms of re- referring back to the prophet as well as the previous communities. But again, Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam, as anybody will tell you, any knowledgeable Christian will tell you that Isa alayhi salam was Jewish. He was from Banu Israel. He was the, we believe he's the penultimate prophet, the second last prophet to be sent. And the Jews obviously don't recognize uh, Isa alayhi salam to be a prophet. And the Christians, in a sense, I'd say they, they revere him so much that they believe him to be a part of God. And we've been discussing the theological differences uh, in a short while. We're going to be discussing the Quranic uh, narrative first. And everything that I'm discussing today is really important, especially as Muslims, is that whilst we discuss some of the theological differences between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, by no means does Islam encourage us to be anti-Semitic or in any way go and offend Christians. <coughs> we live in a majority Christian country. And the fact that people who are celebrating whatever they want to celebrate, it's their free right to do what they want. The same freedom that allows us to practice our faith it's the same right that allows anybody to practice a faith or no faith. But these are some theological differences that are important for us to appreciate and understand that what makes Islam so distinct. Some people could accuse the Prophet Islam of being tutored by monks of the New Testament. In fact, this is a claim that's made against the Prophet Islam, which the Quran responds to. That you know he was only darasta, he was only like tutored and, and taught by the New Testament scholars, and therefore he came about with scripture. Well, the Qur'an diametrically opposes the Trinitarian idea, which is the central creed of Christianity. So if it was a copy and paste job, that would also be similar. One of the key reasons why the Messenger of Allah was sent, one of the key fundamental reasons, was to establish Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to refute the Trinitarian idea. Even though the whole purpose of the Prophet was to refute the Trinitarian idea, the Messenger of Allah had so much respect for the Christians. The Messenger of Allah went out of his way to respect the idea of religion, freedom of religious expression. It doesn't come from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights or the European Convention of Human Rights or in 1215 from Magna Carta when, when everybody was under the law. We, we're talking here about 7th century Arabia. When the Messenger of Allah comes into Medina, read about this. When, when people call us intolerant and when people call us a bit crazy, when the Messenger of Allah comes into Medina, he signs three treaties with three distinct communities. The Jews, the Christians, the Christians of Najran, and the Zoroastrians who are fire worshippers. And specifically to the Christians of Najran, the Messenger of Allah in this charter writes down seven points. And the first point is, I will make sure I will protect your life, your property, I will protect your way of life, your priests will be protected as well as your scripture. This seems contradictory. The whole purpose of the Prophet was to correct the belief, and at the same time the Messenger of Allah said, but at the same time I respect you that I will protect your right to believe in what you want to believe. This is who the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was. In fact, there are other narrations that talk about how a delegation that the Messenger of Allah received from the Christians of Najran. In regards to the strength of the hadith is questionable, but the narration is there, 
where the Messenger of Allah invited the Christian, the Prophet engaged in a dialogue and a discussion. This is the greatest of all da'is, the Prophet ﷺ, calling people towards the oneness of Allah. And they're well convinced. They're, they're genuinely well convinced. And the Messenger of Allah says, why? If you don't want to believe, you don't want to believe. But the Messenger of Allah's job was to propagate. In fact, it would, it would trouble the Prophet ﷺ so much when he would see people who didn't believe, that it would make him feel very uncomfortable. You know how we lose sleep at the end of the month, we have to pay some bills or, you know? What direct debits are coming out or family situations. What stressed the Prophet ﷺ was that people weren't believing. And he would go out of his way to be hospitable towards them. And in, in Medina, the Messenger of Allah sees a, a janazah of a young girl, 12 year old girl, and he stands up in respect and tears flowing down his eyes. And Umar is saying to the Messenger of Allah, This is not even a Muslim. She's a Jewish young girl. Somebody left without Iman. Somebody left this tradition without recognizing the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was a personal attack on the Messenger of Allah because he was so empathetic towards the needs of people. Not only towards restricted towards the needs of people here in terms of social economics, but in terms of their long lasting needs of the Akhirah, and that's their salvation. And on that basis, we also have Ira here who joined us. Who we had about, Brother Yusuf was telling me, there were about 65 youth who came yesterday for the Dawah training. The brothers are here, you can see the banners and the posters, and they'll also be going into town for the next few hours inviting people. Do join them. But just sharing what the tradition of Islam really is about. I've had some really interesting discussions and dialogue with some of the priests, especially within Leicester, and I do a lot of interfaith work. And uh, he said something really interesting. He was actually with me in the... I went to Al-Aqsa, uh, close to the Western Wailing Wall, and, and we were just sitting there, and he said, I feel so sorry for the Jews. I said, why? He goes, because they don't recognize such a great being. They don't recognize Jesus Christ. And I said to him, nicely, I feel sorry for you, because you don't recognize the Prophet <laughs> That the fact that Jews don't recognize Jesus, you guys don't recognize the Messenger of Allah. In the, in the third Jews, God says that God has given a rank, fadila, honor to the different prophets. Allah distinguishes between their ranks. But we as Muslims, and this is what makes our ummah so great, that we cannot differentiate or discriminate on who we want to believe in. Like the Jewish community don't want to believe in the Isa al Islam, Christians don't want to recognize the Prophet. We do not differentiate between any of the prophets. They are all divinely inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But coming back to the scripture, and that coming back to the concept of Tawheed, is the idea of God being in three parts. In fact, the word Trinity, if you read in the, in the, in the Bible, the word Trinity isn't even used within the scripture. It's an idea that comes about later on. The Quran actually uses the word Trinity. Don't you dare believe in this idea of God being in three parts. If you desist and stay away, it's better for you. In fact, when the Christians in the Najran came to the Messenger of Allah, they had this kind of uh, this, this air of confidence. I'm not saying this generally to all Christians. I'm saying specifically this community. They had this air of confidence about them. They would say that we're God's children. God loves us. Jesus came to die for our sins. <coughs> we are God's children and God loves us. Meaning that we're going, to, we're going to be securing our salvation for eternity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, If God loves you so much, why does He punish you for your sins then? And the biggest punishment is the fact that you're associating a partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's Isa alayhi salam. So this idea is directly attacked within the scripture. But we have a beautiful surah, chapter 19, that's revealed in the Quran. Beautiful surah. You know, according to the encyclopedia, there are about 25 to 30,000 Christian denominations and still growing. Right? From, t- from, uh, from, the, from, the, from the schism that took place uh, in 1015 in the 11th century with Roman Catholic and the, and the Greek Orthodox Church uh, to the Reformation that happens in 1516 in the 16th century with Martin Luther. From then on, groups have been growing and growing and growing. 25 to 30,000 different denominations. According to the encyclopedia, there are about 75 to 80,000 different versions of the Bible. Versions, like one Bible says something, another Bible says something else. Versions. No chapter has been dedicated to Mary, who they believe is the, is the father, uh, is the, sorry, the mother of God, Jesus. No chapter has been dedicated to Mary. She's mentioned in the scripture, she's not specifically dedicated the chapter. While the Quran goes a step further, she's the only woman mentioned by name within our scripture. Other women are referred to indirectly, the, the mother of so and so, the wife of so and so. But specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions her name. And she's a great example. 
Allah holds her in such high esteem. Not only for women, that you know, this is a woman, female role model, women need to be like her. No, she's a generic role model, she's a universal role model till the end of time. Now, you know, this Surah Maryam, I'm teaching actually in Birmingham, plug in. <laughs> for that. I, I teach this over a day, Surah Maryam course, it, it, full on day. We've gone to the history of Christianity, we look at the scriptures, uh, going to exploring what the Surah is really about. And that's only two rukus, so in the next. 10 minutes or so, I'm going to be really rushed into what I'm trying to even try to explain. There's just a bit of a taster. Let's sit down with the children and explain, it, explain to them what the Quranic narrative is. The Surah Maryam starts off by discussing Zakaria alayhi salam, but we'll skip that part. In chapter 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What good fil kitabi Maryam? Remember the time of, uh, in, the, in the scripture of Maryam alayhi salam. When she actually withdrew herself from her family to an eastern direction. She went away from her family. Now what happened then is that when, Allah, when her mother gave uh, birth to her, it's a long story short, when her mother gave birth to her, she said, I am going to be, um, I am going to sacrifice in a sense this child spiritually for the sake of God. I'm going to dedicate this child to worshipping God in, in, the, in the synagogue, you can say. Now when she gave birth to a female, she gave birth to a girl and not to a a male and a male can be a boy can can be a rabbi in the future. She was like perplexed. What am I supposed to do now? But she still took up a vow and dedicated that Maryam alayhi salam would grow up and she would uh, grow up in, within the synagogue and had like a little niche area that they would, which was dedicated for her worship. From at such a young age, Zakaria alayhi salam actually won custody over her. The Quran also discusses how. But when he would go to feed, like give us some food, you know, we have like takeaway pizza and stuff like going on around here. He would go to Maryam alayhi salam and he would find Maryam alayhi salam would have out of season fruits. Like in winter time, you're just eating mangoes. And you're like, what? How is this happening? And he actually, Ya Maryam, Anna laki hadha. He says to Maryam alayhi salam, where on earth did you get this fruit from? She said, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine takeaway, a delivery. Uber driver, like that's like Jabal Islam coming down and bringing your food straight from heaven for you. This is who, who Maryam, from a young age, Maryam alayhi salam is so inspirational. Look at this that a prophet, the prophet himself, Zakaria alayhi salam, is so inspired, and he thinks if God can give this young girl out of season fruits, then the same God can bless me with a child when my wife is barren. And that, that's how Surah Maryam starts. By him actually making a dua to Allah. Although my bones have become weak, I've become old, but please bless me with a child. So we actually continuing from this. So from a young age, she's inspiring a prophet. Imagine that. Ali Imran is actually her family that Allah dedicates a chapter to. Hannah is her mother. So she's growing up in an amazing family. So she takes... So some scholars say that the reason why she actually left this synagogue was because... Uh, she was menstruating, and the Jewish scripture, the Mishnah, is very similar to in terms of the Quranic principles. Jews are the most similar to Islam when it comes to, all, uh, in terms of orthodoxy and jurisprudence, in terms of how we interpret fiqh text. So she was not able to continue worshiping God, so she secluded herself, and now scholars were of the opinion that she was actually going to bathe and purify herself for Ghusl. So when she goes, Allah says, فَأَرَسْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشْرًا سَوِيَا The language here you used is so interesting too. Allah says, we sent, Ruhana literally means I will use the literal translation. It literally means Holy Ghost. Ruhana, Ruh, the, the, the spirit, Jibrail alayhi salam. Allah says, I sent Jibrail alayhi salam. And then he took a, Fatimathallah Bashar and Sawiya, he took a form of a, like a healthy man. In terms of his perfect, he looks like a human being. And this is Jibrail alayhi salam. Now imagine, Maryam alayhi salam, obviously being a, a, a lady who, who preserves her chastity, who is dedicated to worshipping Allah. And now all of a sudden, while she's going to bathe, some of the opinion, whether she was going to bathe or whether she was coming back, that's disputed amongst the Mufassirin. But now she sees this man. Obviously you think, man, what's going on here? And straight away she says these words. She says, I seek protection in the Rahman, the merciful one, in kunta taqiyya, if you are conscious of him. Meaning everybody was worshipping Allah. Meaning if you've got bad intentions, then I'm seeking protection in Allah. And if you have any faith in you, then you better stop. That's what she's saying between the lines. Now, obviously, Jibran al-Islam, who is in male form, in the name of Allah is implored. She, he actually says it to her, actually, I dropped it straight. He says, He goes, 
I am a messenger of your Lord. Again, the language that's used here. Instead of saying our Lord, the same Allah that you're seeking protection in is the same Allah that sent me to you. Imagine this is happening. This is not like a fictitious story where everyone lives happily ever after. In fact, it gets worse afterwards too. This is happening. This is a miracle that's mentioned in the Quran. There's no Joseph. This Joseph's individual is a fictitious figure according to the Quran. Not Joseph of Yusuf alayhi salam. That happens long before. But Maryam alayhi salam is not married. She has no uh, husband. She is not in a bond. There's no three wise men. There's no guiding star. There's nothing. She's alone. This is, how, this is the Quranic narrative, which is a stark <laughs> difference from the biblical version of what we've grown up hearing, listening, or probably even acting in place. I remember I was in a school play too. Allah has sent me to you so I can give you a gift. Ahab, I give you a gift. I confer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a zakiya, a pure child, a smart child, somebody who's spiritually in, in tune uh, with his Lord. And then she says, and she's thinking on a biological level here, she says, How on earth will I have a son when I have a boy? And no man has touched me. I ain't in no relationship with anybody. How on earth am I going to have a child? And I'm not a rebel, meaning I don't get up to no good either. I don't have no haram relationships with people. And she's saying, how, am I, how on earth am I supposed to get... And this is, you know, you have like in English, you have like a one-liner. People on the streets, right? One-liner, it's just like you say something so profound, it just like kills the whole conversation. God has this way of just using one word in the scripture. He says, Qal, he says, Kadalik. There's really no translation to this. It just means... It's going to happen. It's done. Finished. Done. It's going to happen. This is the same response Zakaria alayhi salam received. The same exact story happens with Zakaria alayhi salam when, when the prophet, when the angel comes to him and informs him that you will soon, your wife will give birth to a child. And she says, how on earth will my wife give birth when she's old? Some of us didn't the opinion she was 80, 90 years old. How will she give birth? And again, the response is Kadhalik. It's gonna happen. It's just, but there's a difference between the conception of Yahya alayhi salam and, and, and Isa alayhi salam. Yahya alayhi salam is biologically conceived by his two parents. Yahya alayhi salam is born without, sorry, Isa alayhi salam is born without a father. And that's why in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna mathla Isa indallahi kamathali adam. If you speak to a Christian and say, Why do you believe Jesus to be divine? They say, Well, he's born without a father. Even though they believe he did have a father because Mary, Mary according to them, was married, but he was divinely, uh, in a sense, uh, but his mother conceived. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you think that Jesus is divine because he never had a father, then Adam alayhi salam never had parents. Yet no Christian ascribes divinity to him. So this is the same kind of Quranic argument that he makes. But going back to the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala, uh, Allah says, this is easy for Allah to do. For, for the fact that you can become pregnant. If Allah can create you from nothing and brought you into existence, then Allah can bring a child from nothing too. And Allah says, so then he can be a sign for the whole of humanity and a source of mercy for everybody. Isa alayhi salam. And this is something that's going to happen. It's something which has been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now she, Now she's pregnant. So now she's, she's conceived and now she goes to a, 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 place, a, a place that she secludes herself. Remember, there's, there's no morphine, there's no epidural, there's nothing, there's no midwife, there's nothing there. And she's actually in labor pain and she's struggling. She says, for a jahl makhad, makhad is a labor pain. And that intense labor pain made her come to this area where there was a date palm tree and she was resting on it. And she says, look at this statement. I've done a whole lecture just on this next statement. And in fact, I've written a book on this statement, on spiritual intelligence. She says a statement which for me, puzzled me like crazy. She says, she says, قالت, ya laytani, qabla hadha, wa kuntu She's in labor pain. She has to take this scandalous child back to her society. And in, in, in the height of her literal clinical depression, she says, she makes a suicidal statement. She says, if only I was dead. I wish I was dead. And I cease to exist and people don't even recognize why. I, I wish I didn't exist. Not because she's struggling with the physical pain, which she was, but now she's going to be taking this child back to a community that's going to bring her family into disrepute. 
And not only, they didn't like it from the first place, and now they're gonna, this is going to be adding fuel to the fire. And when people say that, you know, well, if you're depressed, then your iman must be low. Malim al-Islam's iman is sky high. That's not true. It's not true. There could be a spiritual deficiency in terms of a lack of spirituality may help you manage a mental health situation. But you can, if you break your hand and then go to the imam and say, Imam, I've broken my hand, what should I do? Go to the A&E, right? Go to the right people. Go put your hand in a cast for six weeks. Get an x-ray done. You can pray the Quran for like three hours or ten hours if you want and say you feel the same. It's the illness that's there. But, the, but, this, but this comes in a social situation where she finds it very difficult. But she uses her spirituality, which is a direct link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to kind of find a way out. Long story short, because we are five minutes now, she comes back to her community. If you do get a chance, please read Surah Maryam, chapter 19. Check it online, listen to some lectures, sit down with your kids, especially for Christmas, instead of watching Home Alone, repeat like three times on ITV. <laughs> right? Sit down with your kids and go through the whole chapter where it discusses. She comes back to her community and straight away they say, This child? Where on earth did this child come from? And Allah had instructed her, instructed that you will not speak. You will not speak to them except that you made some uh, gestures, you did ishara to them. So now the, the miracle, the first miracle ascribed to Isa salam, in our scripture is when he speaks whilst he's a toddler. He's, he's, he's like a newborn, fresh child. And he begins to speak like a, like a fully grown adult. In the, in the New Testament, the first uh, miracle ascribed to Jesus is when he turns water to wine. But in the Quran, he says that the first miracle that he performs is he actually speaks in the Abdullah. He says, I am the slave. I'm, I'm enslaved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says this to the people. The people are shocked that child is speaking. It must be insane. This is all miraculous. Now when he grows up, he becomes an, he's an amazing individual. He's so empathetic towards the people's in the needs of the people. When he realizes that people are now going to reject him, he says, who's going to help me in, in, in propagating God's message? The Hawariyun, the disciples of Jesus, who are amazing people, stood up and said, we will assist and help God's religion. And then he goes and performs miracles. Miracles that are mentioned in the New Testament and miracles that are confirmed within our final testament. Within the Quran and the second khutbah, I'll continue from there. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah alayhi wa alaykum as-salamu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, nahmiduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nukminu bihi wa natawakul alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroon anfusina wa min siyyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu falamudzilla lahu min yudlil falahadila. Wa nashadu wa la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa nashadu wa anna sayyidina wa maulana muhammadin abduhu wa rasoolah. Quickly a few minutes, I'm going to wrap this up. So when... Isa a.s. realizes that people are now going to reject him. He asks for reinforcement and those, those are the Hawariyun. He begins to perform some miracles. He will sculpt uh, like, like, you know, like a dough and plasticine out of clay. As, uh, like a model of a bed. And he would blow into it and he would become a bed. He would, you know, somebody who was born blind, he would pass over his hand and he would store their eyesight. One of the reasons, according to some scholars, like Razi says, why he's called Masih is because he would pass over his hand over a surface to perform miracles. If somebody had like leprosy or a skin condition, he would pass over his hand and restore somebody's health. In fact, in one narration, he talks about Shamawil, where the son of Nuh alayhi salam, where he passed over his hand over his grave and he brought him back to life. Bringing dead people back to life with God's permission, in God's name. And he keeps on saying this over and over again. We believe in the Quran, and this is very clear in our scripture. It's, it's, it's as clear, and this makes it so distinct from the Christian community. That Jesus السلام, was not killed, nor was he crucified. Well, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, But Rafa'ahu Allah alayhi was taken up to the heavens. And the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise Isa alayhi salam. And this is mentioned in the Quran. Anta qulta nas, did you tell people to take you and your mother ilahayni min dunillah as gods besides Allah? Obviously, Allah knows he didn't. But you were in the court of justice, Malik Yomidin, the day of retribution, where every person will have the opportunity to make a claim and people have to defend themselves. So again, Allah said, did you say this to the people? He says, again, this is an amazing one line, with such humility, he says, Ya Allah, in kuntu qultuhu faqad alimta. Wallah, if I had said such a preposterous, such a statement, such a sacrilegious statement, you would know it. Allah al you know everything of the unseen. And be on that day where, Allah, where, where Isa would actually absolve himself from this Trinitarian idea. 
Having said that, we do live in a, Muslim, in a Christian majority country. Christian values are amazing, honestly. They're, they're universal principles. The idea of being dutiful to your neighbor, being kind to your parents. You know, values that allow us as migrants coming to this country to practice our faith freely. It's really important that we don't have to get all like insecure and weird. And you know, I can't. I mean, people keep on asking me, can I say Merry Christmas or not? There's no really Islamic position on this. It's your personal choice. Some scholars have argued for it. Some people have argued against it. If you want to say it, go for it. If you don't want to say it, it's just your personal choice. As long as you believe what we believe in regards to Islam, that Allah doesn't have a son, lam yalid wa lam yulad. But use this opportunity. It's, it's a da'wah time at every given time. And you're in your Christmas little parties and you're working places and all this place. Sit down and just say, you know what? We believe in Jesus too. And this is what we believe about Jesus. And Jesus is such a cool prophet because this is what mentions in our scripture. I had a woman who came to me about a few years ago. And when I just mentioned this discussion that, you know, we have a chapter dedicated in our scripture for Mary. And she said, Mary's mentioned in your scripture? I just asked her to read chapter 19. No exaggeration. Two weeks later, I thought she was coming back to ask me some questions. She said, I want to pray the shahada. <laughs> I didn't even say anything to her. People are desperate to know our tradition, just our inability to propagate this message. Well, our deen is so re- amazing. Our religion is so resolute and clear. It's just that we don't have a connection or understand what it means in order to make it relatable and relevant for the masses. And therefore, we have a team of, from Ayra who have come down. We have an exhibition here that's going around in town. Uh, they're beginning our uh, leaflets, engaging in dialogue and discussion. Every time they come, there's, there's a bunch of people who become Muslims. So if you do get a chance, inshallah, do speak to them afterwards. Do join them if you can and continue spreading this message. Take this time, opportunity to sit down with your kids. It's so important. Sit down with your kids, regardless of what age they are, and just explain the Quranic narrative. If you don't know it, go study it. Go listen to a lecture somewhere online. Read the tafsir, Ibn Kathir. Do something and inshallah educate our young people. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah that he gives us the love of Isa alayhi salam. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to replicate his, 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 his behavior and how relevant he was to his society. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to use this as a tool, as a means to propagate this faith and allow other people to understand the true Jesus, inshallah. أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين ذي الساعة ميوت علاه ورسله فقد رشد ومن يعصيه ما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حيا وثمان وقضاهم عليه وفاطمة السيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله اللهم فل العباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباتن لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير القرون قرن ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم والسلطان ذل الله في الأرض من أهان سلطان الله في الأرض أهانه الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء ومن كل بغي عيد لعلن تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم مشكروني ولا تكفرون